In this video, we're going to take a 741 op amp, there's the schematic symbol there, and using this basic layout, which I got from the Texas Instrument UA741 data sheet. Unfortunately, the uh, Texas Instrument 741, uh, UA741 that I have, doesn't work. And uh, so, this is a different one from ST Microelectronics, but in any case, should work exactly the same if they're working so that's the basic schematic for it we have to power the 741 op amp you don't always see the uh, voltage we're going to use 12 volts in this video that's the voltage that the uh, data sheet used and it does work with 5 volts too but you of course won't get 12 volts out you'll get a little less than 5 volts we're actually going to get a little less than 12 volts out of here up to about 11.5 so in any case let's go to the data sheet and the uh, op amp we have to power it so we already have that done and the voltage will be 12 volts we'll get that from a power supply so I have these jumpers with alligator clips I'll clip the alligator clips from the power supply to those to power the rails and then I have these jumpers so when you power one of these rails the other one gets powered and uh, so both of them will have power now, pin number two is the inverting input, I should call it input. I, earlier video I kept calling them pins, they're the input, so that's the inverting input. So the numbering system works, you have either one or two divots on top there, this one's to the left, the one by that one is pin one, then you work your way down, two, three, four, you get to the bottom, you jump across, some dual inline package. That's the kind that snaps into the breadboard there. They're longer, so you keep numbering down until you get to the bottom and jump over. Bottom is four, so we jump over to five, six, seven, eight, working our way up. So two, the two uh, middle pins there are the inputs. Number two, the upper middle pin is the inverting input. Pin number three down here is the non-inverting input. That's where we're gonna send our voltage to and pin number two will give feedback to the output. The output is where we're going to output our voltage. So pin number two will basically be monitoring that and making sure it lines up with the voltage to pin number three. And this is the circuit we're going to build. So I'll go into more detail about this while we are building it. So the follower depends on a voltage coming to the non-inverting input and we want an adjustable voltage so we're going to use a trim pot we can't set it below two volts we we can it's safe but it won't output below two volts that's just the way the 741 op amp is it's made for a split power supply and is meant to be in the center of a positive and a negative voltage but you can use it in some DC circuits as we see here. So we're going to take a 10,000 ohm trim pot and we're going to use it as a voltage divider. We're going to connect one side to the positive rail, one side there. So there's a resistive element that goes across here. There's a wiper attached to uh, this knob here which does pop out and uh, I meant to just pop the knob off, not the whole thing. But uh, in any case, we uh, can pop that out if we have a hex tool or something. Usually it pops right out. Never mind. We'll just leave it. No big deal. So in any case, there's a wiper. And there's a little notch down here so you can tell how far it is. But in any case, there's an output here. That pin there. And there's a wiper that slides across there. So we're going to finish this voltage divider with a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor. And the reason why it's 2.2 is because, so 2,200 ohms, because I don't have a 2,000 ohm resistor, uh, at least not in the, the kit that I'm using mostly. But in any case, now we have basically 12,000 ohms of resistance here. So we have 12 volts. If we could go across the whole thing, we could go from 12 to 0 volts. But some of that resistance is on the negative side. So we can only put 1,000 ohms towards the positive side 
and about 2000 towards the negative side so we can get down to about 2 volts that's basic voltage divider stuff I'm not going to go over that too much the uh, main takeaway is we can get about uh, 2.146 volts up to 12 volts using uh, this format and that's if these are both perfect components too so there might be some variation but in any case the other part of the circuit so this is just the load I added this for visual effect the other part of the circuit that is important is this resistor here I don't think the exact value matters I haven't uh, played around with it but the uh, what this resistor does it brings the uh, voltage that is at the output there because these inputs don't really let any current through just a tiny bit but for the most part you can say they don't let any current through it's that small amount of current so it will sense the uh, voltage coming across there and the uh, data sheet just recommended a 10,000 ohm resistor and uh, so now that we got there let's connect the uh, trim pot to the non inverting input so I'll just tip it like that and so this wire is what will transfer the uh, voltage over so I mentioned before that these inputs let practically no current through them so I mean they're not perfect a little bit slips through but for the most part it's nothing and uh, but if you really want to get technical a little bit is getting in and that may factor into something that's really sensitive to a small amount of current coming in but for the most part it's just looking at the voltage coming in here because if you ever try to power an LED with a 10 kilo ohm trim pot to uh, lower the voltage that high amount of resistance doesn't let hardly any current go through uh, even though you have a, a voltage set at the output point so the LED drops the voltage and uh, even more and makes it useless so we're just setting a voltage to the non-inverting input right there and that sets the voltage to the output so the voltage that the output uses the current I should say comes from the power supply itself so there's high impedance coming in low impedance going out the component itself not limiting current in this case it will be the resistor and the LED so let's add those so this is a one kilo ohm resistor because we're dealing with potentially five, uh, 12 volts. And uh, so up to 12 volts, one kilo ohm resistor will protect the resistor from overheating. It'll be just a tad bit more than we want. This is a quarter watt resistor. So 0.25 and 0.14 is a little bit more than half. You usually want to keep it about half, but the LED is going to drop about two volts so there'll be uh, less current and uh, the resistor will be getting a little less warm so we're in a safe range for how warm the resistor will get at the maximum amount of voltage and so we have the resistor there now we'll have the LED the LED is polarized of course the anode the longer lead right there needs to go towards the positive side of the circuit for it to light up and the cathode the short lead to the negative side so we're going to put the cathode to that ground wire right there and that is it really simple circuit and you get to use the 741 op amp one of the most famous op amps ever uh, most well known but usually you need a split power supply for the circuits that uh, the 741 op amp is intended for and let's plug in the uh, bench power supply so it's got alligator clips there it's already set to 12 volts and one nice thing about the bench power supply is we don't have to worry about too much current for the bench power supply it automatically limits it it can provide enough current to the damaged components here but in any case there you can see that the LED is on and I don't have to worry about setting it too low I don't even think I have to worry about setting it too high but uh, we got that resistor so we set it down now we just barely have enough voltage to get the LED to light and then on top of that the resistor is going to limit current but the LED is going to block at least about 1.6 volts as current goes up it's going to block closer to 2 volts and so there we go and we probably can only output about 11, 11 and a half 11.5 volts I should say so let us get the multimeter and uh, look at that. So 
So yeah, I really like this circuit. I'm glad I found it on the uh, data sheet because usually I try to adjust circuits for the particular op amp I have and uh, I'd rather make actual circuits from the data sheet. So our output here is 7.19 volts. That's the output of the uh, trim pot. It's the input for the op amp, the non-inverting input. Now we come here and you can see 7.2. What was it here? 7.19. So the same. Let's turn it up quite a bit. And uh, oops, there we go. The uh, voltage at the uh, trim pot 11.6. So I bet it will be slightly lower here. You can see it's 10.8. We went up probably a little bit too high. So. So there's a the voltage 9.9 .9. and we got 9.9 .9 there. Let's try to go up just a tad bit higher. Ten point seven six. There we go, ten point seven six. So up to about eleven, somewhere around eleven, eleven point five, we should probably be okay. Let's go down to the other end. To uh all the way, you know, uh, just up a little bit. So there you can see 2.3 volts and 2.3 volts out there. And of course the power rail, as I said, has uh, 12 volts. I set that, oops, have the probe backwards. I set that from the power supply. It's okay to measure voltage backwards. You just get a negative symbol on uh, the display. So there we go, just a tiny bit below 12 volts, but practically spot on 12 volts. So that's it for the circuit, pretty simple and nice so if you have a 741 op amp not sure what to do with it i think this would be a great circuit to start with